A year ago, I bought this Honda CRF 450L with the express intention of building it into the ultimate BDR Slayer for my trip on the Oregon BDR this year. Now that I've finished that trip, a lot of you have asked me to review the bike and talk about how it did on the trip, and uh, I'm happy to report it was pretty awesome. So this is my 2019 Honda CRF 450L, the bike that I've built up and called the BDR Slayer and has now successfully done so. We completed the Oregon BDR in five days, south to north, a few mishaps along the way, but relatively unscathed for the two of us that got done, made it to the end. I have this bike in large part to thank. So in terms of performance of this motorcycle, the way that I have it set up, and I will go through how I have it set up at the end of this video, this bike was, was fantastic. It was perfect. It was exactly amazing. I don't know if there's a better setup for what we did, at least not for me. Um, I can't imagine a motorcycle serving me better than this one did on the tough sections, on the difficult sections, on the unexpected sections. Now, the idea with this bike was I knew that the Oregon BDR was going to be a tough one. It's top three most difficult BDRs supposedly and so I wanted a bike that I would feel comfortable on taking on whatever the trail could throw at me and having completed the route I can tell you it is pretty difficult, pretty consistently difficult. It's like an all-day difficulty kind of thing instead of just patches of difficulty and off-road wise this bike did incredibly well. Now, there was never a moment where I thought I was in over my head or thought my bike couldn't handle it the advantage of being on a more lightweight dual sport or light adventure bike like this is you don't think about dropping the bike as much if i'd been on my tenere i definitely would have had a lot of moments of like oh i don't know if i want to commit to that but there is zero hesitation from this motorcycle both from the rider who is incredibly confident in this bike and from the bike itself because it can take on pretty much anything and that's in large part to the due to the way that i have it set up which like i said i'll go over in a minute if i had to complain about things that this bike didn't do well on the bdr number one fuel capacity fuel range uh, there was a lot of butt puckery fuel range shenanigans especially when we got turned around on section one uh, when you have to do bypasses in there, unexpected pieces of the route or extra stuff to, to backtrack or whatever when you lose somebody, that can exacerbate fuel anxiety. So I do have the three gallon tank on here. So it's not the stock tank. I didn't want to go to the five. I really don't like the way they look. And I also like to ride this bike like on trails. This will be my trail riding exploring bike also. And so I just didn't want a big bulky tank on there. So the three gallon, which has at least made it possible to get through sections of the route, it would have been impossible on the stock two gallon tank. Uh, it gets me about 110 to 120 miles of range i'm getting right around 40 miles to the gallon depending on the terrain and how heavy-handed i am and i tend to be a little heavy-handed on the throttle fuel anxiety was a big concern that is one thing that made me wish i was on an adventure bike with a bigger tank seat height is still it's not unmanageable for me so uh don't hear me saying if you have a 30 inch inseam like me you can't ride a tall bike you absolutely can it's just i'm right on my tippy toes and so i have anxiety about getting on and off the bike in rough terrain or just have to find a good spot to get off because I still like to step up on the peg and swing my leg over especially when there's bags on the back and you can't get your leg over the back these are not the bags I had on the bike when I ran it by the way it's back in day trip trim but I did a full video on the luggage that I took on the giant loop channel you can check it out over there my other major concern on the trip with this bike was highway performance now there's almost none of that on the route you're never on the highway for more than 10 or 20 miles on the route it's almost all uh, gravel so it's not a huge concern on the route but it's traveling to and from the route where it's a concern it will do 75 80 85 uh, but it's very vibrate -y. so your hands kind of go numb. I, I like to get off the bike after about an hour on the highway. The fairing up here does help some. It deflects the wind and it only, it's only really hitting you in the head and on the sides, but you're not getting it on your chest. But I didn't build it to be comfortable on the highway. I built it to be capable of doing the highway if I had to. And that was as, as little highway as I could do on that trip. I will say best mods I've done in terms of making it more capable and making this trip successful. The suspension, I had Paul at Evo suspension in Forest Grove do the front suspension and the rear. He set it up for me. I should really talk more about that in the mods, but if you're looking for insight into what's made it so capable, that and then the ECU from Takamoto, thank you Takamoto for that, are really what made, transform this bike from a very twitchy, difficult to ride motorcycle into the smooth BDR Slayer that it is today. I couldn't be happier with the 450L's performance. It was exactly what I needed every time I needed it. So my overall review of how the 450L does on a BDR, great bike. And I have to give a shout out and a thank you to John T. Young. So if you want more uh, 450L content, 
definitely pop over to John T. Young's channel. There was a lot of inspiration from him for this build, and you'll see a lot of the same things on his as are on mine because he had a lot of things figured out. One thing in particular I will credit to him is my lack of anxiety about the subframe here on the Honda 450L because he has a video where he literally stands on it, and it's totally fine. So uh, that made me feel a lot less concerned about the 30 or 40 pounds of gear I had on the back and a lot less concerned than I would have been on a KTM or a Husky with either no subframe or a composite subframe. So it's aluminum, it's bolted on, and uh, it's very rock solid. So yet another reason why the 450L makes a great light adventure bike, if that's the kind of thing you're into. I'm not gonna go super in depth in the mods because I have whole videos on those already, but in terms of the overall picture of the BDR Slayer, let me run you through what's on here and how I set it up for this trip. I will just link everything in the description for you. Again, remember the luggage is not on here. This is not the luggage that I ran. There's a whole video on that in the Giant Loop channel, but it was the Coyote, Giant Loop Coyote, Giant Loop Rogue, and the Giant Loop Diablo tank bag, and the Giant Loop Fender slash number plate bag, which I ended up losing and then getting back because I didn't tighten it down every day because I'm dumb or was in a hurry or who knows. Anyway, let's talk about mods on the bike so you can get a sense of the overall BDR Slayer build. We'll start at the front, work our way to the back. One of the most important mods is tires. These are the Tusk D Sports, front and rear. This is the actual front that I ran on the trip. The rear I have actually replaced since I got back because it was really shot. I had a lot less on it than I thought I did when I started and it was gone by the time we finished. So Tusk D Sport tires, front and rear. They were fantastic in the sand, the rocks, on the road, everywhere. I love these tires. Custom suspension by Evo Suspension. Paul is a rock star, magician, wizard. So he just put new race tech springs in the front, kept the stock valving and just adjusted it for me. Did a custom spring in the back and uh, that did not cost me as much as you would think. So highly recommend Paul and his services if you're local at all. This is the IMS three gallon tank that I mentioned. On the front, adventure spec mini fairing with a rally tower on the back. Obviously I have double tech mirrors. These are the Zeta hand guards. Here's a key mod that didn't really help me on the BDR, but these are the Ryder cargo hooks that I use whenever I put it in the back of the truck or on the hitch carrier. They work amazing. They're out of the way. It's so nice to have those. On the dash, Adventure Spec Rally Tower. I actually did have my Zumo X-T2 on here, but I never wired in the charger, as you can see, and it just couldn't keep up USB, so I only was able to use it the first day because I'm dumb. I ended up using a quad lock mount with a charger the rest of the way and just using my phone for navigation. Also in front, Flatland Racing Radiator Guards and the Flatland Racing Skid Plate, both of which work well. Fortunately, I haven't had to test them. I've got the Tusk Folding Rear Brake Lever and the Tusk Foot Pegs. Those are great, work well, not expensive, pretty awesome. Giant Loop Mounts here that I use to attach my Coyote bag. And the Giant Loop Heat Shield, the Hot Spring Heat Shield, kept my bags nice and not melted. Under the seat, which is from Seat Concepts, I love this seat. Under the seat, you can't see it, but it's the AIM ECU from Taco Moto. Taco Mike was generous enough to send that out to me to test out, and I gotta say that thing transforms this bike. Highly recommend, must do mod, get that ECU in there. It made all the difference. It's got the single track mode, which gives me all the down low power and control that I need, and it's got the full power honey badger mode that you can just rip through the desert or on the highway, whatever it is. Really cool to have, really liked it. And here is the Graves full titanium exhaust all the way that thing adds a really good exhaust note a lot of extra power to the build that goes really well with the ecu taco mike says that's the best combination so was really into that works connection rear brake reservoir protector tusk rear brake caliper protector tusk disc guard and look you can see it's taking some dings man Oh, that reminds me, there's another thing on the front you need to see. This is the Graves Carbon Fiber front disc guard. It's taken a bunch of hits too underneath, so really cool to have that on there. This is the 12 o'clock labs tail tidy, and I put the Tusk rack back on the bike for this trip because it gave me a solid anchoring point for all my luggage and a platform to put it on, so that worked out really well. Inside the tires, I have Tusk rim locks and Tusk heavy duty tubes and the Tusk folding shift lever over here on the left. So there's not a mod on here that I wouldn't recommend, seriously. Uh, really happy with everything on here. Highly recommend it all. And like I said, I'll link it all in the description. But in terms of an overall review of how the BDR Slayer did in terms of slaying BDRs, well, she killed it. She killed it. It was a great trip. I really enjoyed riding this bike. You know, there are some downsides to it. Uh, I was real uh, butt puckery about the mileage because it was about 1,200 miles by the time we got done because I hadn't done an oil change. But Oil looked fine, she was fine, so far so good. The air filter really needed to clean. I also have a Tusk air filter in here. 
uh, that you could see if I pulled the seat off, but I'm not going to, just take my word for it. Oh, and I added a charger in my Adventure Spec Rally Tower, USB charger. So if you've got questions about the build or the bike or how it did on the trip, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I hope uh, you got some ideas for your BDR Slayer build or at least some food for thought if you're looking at buying or working on a Honda 450L. I think in stock form, it's a terrible bike for most people. It's hard to ride, but with a few mods, which cost a lot of money, admittedly, it is one hell of a light adventure bike and uh, it's one I'll be hanging on to for, the, for a while. I know famous last words for me, but I really feel like I will be hanging on to this one for a while. So please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't, because I'm the dork in the road and I want to be your internet riding buddy and I'm better than your regular riding buddies because I come with a mute button. Thank you for watching and please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Uh, thank you. Excellent!